Welcome back to Upfront. The race in Wisconsin's first congressional district is a rematch from 2012, but with a twist. The Republican candidate will be focused solely on his reelection this time around and will meet his Democratic opponent in two debates. Democrat Rob Zerban is again challenging Republican Paul Ryan. Ryan, you'll recall, was campaigning for vice president in 2012 as he also ran for reelection to Congress. Ryan and Zerban will debate on two Mondays in October. And Rob Zerban, the Democratic candidate, joins us now on Up Front. It's good to have you back on the program. Thanks a lot, Mike. How important are these two debates to you? Last time there were no debates. This time you've got two of them. Yeah, we're glad that uh, Congressman Ryan is uh, available to you know debate the issues uh, that are important to people in the first district, and I think it'll give the people a chance to see how we differ in our positions, you know, side by side. So I think they're pretty important. There are big differences, are there not? I mean, do, do you see eye to eye with the congressman on? Anything? Maybe the Packers, but that, yeah. that'd be about it. Uh, it seems so. It seems, but uh, no. We I think we have very different approaches, uh, you know, according to our life experience and how we approach uh, problem solving. So, I think there are big differences. Yeah, give me a sense of, of the differences on some of these issues. Something you're very passionate about is an increase in the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Congressman Ryan on this program a few weeks ago, and he said it's settled economics. If you raise the minimum wage, there are going to be consequences in terms of job growth. Uh, you obviously don't agree with that. How how much should we raise the minimum wage, in your opinion? Well, I can draw on my personal experience as a business owner, somebody who employed almost 50 people. And when I sold my last company in 2008, the majority of my employees back then were earning over 10, 10 an hour. Uh, I think the highest one is earning over $16 an hour at that point. So it's something you can do. Businesses have the capacity to do it because if you have more people with more dollars to spend, that increases business opportunity for small business owners like I was. So, uh, you know, depending upon how much you increase the minimum wage, what's actually possible, uh, you know, we've seen that the 13 states that have gone ahead and increased the minimum wage on their own have fared much better economically than the 37 who haven't. So I, I think it is settled that it is a boon for the economy. Is $15 an hour too much? Would that have economic consequences? Or is that a, a fair wage, in your opinion? I think it's a fair wage. You know, Republicans like to talk about, um, you know, cutting back on what we spend on welfare programs, you know, heating assistance, housing assistance, food assistance. And I think the best way to do that is eliminating the need for them. And the way you do that is by paying people a living wage, because if they don't have to rely on these programs, if they have a, a living wage and can afford to buy groceries, if they can afford the rent, that's the best way to get rid of these programs. So I think this is not unreasonable to ask businesses to make sure that they're supporting uh, their employees, so that we don't have to, that we're not putting them on these government programs. Let's spend a, a moment or two on the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. Congressman Ryan, very critical of that program. Many Republicans are critical. Some want to repeal and replace. Mm -hmm. Some just essentially want to repeal. Um, do you think it's been a success? I do think it's been a success. You do? I do. Um, you know, there are a lot of great provisions. And when you talk about these provisions with people, everybody, by and large, supports it. You know, people want to see kids being able to stay on their parents' program till the age of 26. They want to have the pre existing conditions removed. They, you know, are glad that the caps are no longer in place and what insurance companies have to pay out. So these are great benefits, great steps in the right direction. And, you know, the Republicans, some want to repeal and replace, but they don't have anything to replace it with. They've never presented any ideas of what they would like to do. And don't forget that during the Bush administration, when the Republicans had both the Senate and the House and the White House, their solution was to do nothing. So I'm glad that we got the President and the Democratic Congress and the Democratic Senate to finally do something to address these spiraling health care costs. On the issue of money, and, and you will be greatly outspent in, in this election, uh, you've talked about uh, your desire to see the, the Citizens United ruling mm -hmm. uh, uh, essentially uh, voided by a constitutional amendment. Mm -hmm. um, why do you feel that's necessary? Well, it's just not me. It's 90% of Americans favor getting po money out of our political process because they feel it's destructive to our democracy. Uh, it's something that has to happen because the voice of the people should not be you know, drowned out by people spending millions, billions of dollars trying to have their point, get, uh, trying to make their point. So it's... Um, it's, it's not just me that favors this because, you know, obviously I'm going to be at a spending disadvantage. But the energy and excitement and enthusiasm that's going on here in the state of Wisconsin, I think, can actually carry us at the end of the day on November 4th. Is this job, you, you ran last time mm -hmm. um, uh, unsuccessfully, but is it even harder this time around? And I ask that because 
It's not a presidential election. You're going to have probably fewer Democratic voters turning out. The president mm -hmm. is less popular than he was a couple of years, at least in the state of Wisconsin, according to political polls. How do you see yourself winning, given some of the, the dynamics that have changed? Well, again, you know, this is a, uh, an opportunity for people to go and have their voices heard. And we know that if the 99% would vote, the 1% wouldn't matter. So uh, in the first congressional district, you know, getting Paul Ryan below 55% last time for the first time in his career, we've seen that the number of votes I need in the midterm election, I actually already received in the 2012 election. It's a matter of getting people to the polls and making sure that they're participating in their democracy. And, and we're doing everything we can to ensure that that happens. Rob Zerban is the Democratic candidate in the first congressional district. We appreciate your time. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you. Coming up next, even a former Democratic candidate said Republican Assemblyman Howard Markline has a lock on the 17th district. I'll ask Markline if he thinks that's true. When up front continues.